Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video we're going to explain how to use type declarations in Excel VBA. So the video is all about how you can declare your own user-defined data types in VBA. We'll start by explaining what a type is and why you might want to consider using one in the first place, before we show you how you can declare your first basic type. Once we've done that, we'll show you how you can declare a variable which uses that type, and how you can both read from and write to that variable. We'll spend a short time looking at how you can combine enumerations, something we've covered in a previous video, with your type declarations. And also, to finish the video, how you can use a type that you've declared in further type declarations to create sort of a nested type declaration effect. So there's a few things to cover, let's get started. In VBA, the type statement allows you to declare your own user-defined data types, and that can be a handy thing to be able to do when you're working with well-structured data, such as our list of films. So every record in this list has a set of five properties, an ID, a title, a release date, and so on. And if I wanted to work with a row of data in VBA, I'd want to be able to store that data somewhere. And I've got a variety of choices, I guess the most obvious of which is to use a simple variable, or set of variables. If I switch into the Visual Basic Editor, I've got a routine here where I've declared five separate variables variables, one for each property, and I can choose the data type of those variables and assign a value to each one. That works, but it's a little bit tedious to have to declare multiple variables, particularly if I have to do that more than once, if I create a new subroutine and I want to do something similar. So another approach might be to use basic arrays. If I switch into another module, I've declared a symbol array, um, which has got five elements in it, and I've assigned a value to each one of those five elements. The downside to this approach is that you've got little control over which data types get used. So I've used the variant data type here to allow VBA to, uh, to assign a, a correct data type. Plus it's also a little bit difficult to see um, what values is supposed to be stored in each element of the array. So if I say film two, I'm not entirely certain whether that should be the date or the, the, uh, the length of the film. It doesn't really become clear. So another approach altogether is to use something called a type. So in another module, I've started a symbol subroutine and I've declared already a user-defined type called a film. And what that means is I can declare my own variables based on my new type. So my type is called film, which you'll see appears in the IntelliSense list. And then if I want to assign values to some of its properties, I can say simply things like new film dot, and I get a list of all the properties, the elements that I've declared for my type, and I can assign a value to each one, um, just in a nice, simple, straightforward way, like like so. Then it's very, very obvious what each property is meant to contain. I can control the data types of each property. Um, so this video is going to show you how you can create your own versions of these. So let's look at how to declare a type in the first place. I've inserted a brand new blank module here, and a type declaration is something that must be done at the module level. You can't declare types within a subroutine. So at the top of my module, I'm going to type in, I'm going to start with the word type. Following that, I'm going to enter the name that I want my type to have, and I, as, as earlier on, I'm going to call mine film. And then I'm going to give myself a couple of blank lines, and I'm going to type in end type. What I can then do inside these two lines is declare all the individual elements and the data types that I want my film type to have. So I'm going to indent my code one space, and I'm going to declare, first of all, an ID, which I'm going to store as an integer. And I'm going to declare on the next line a name as a string. And then on the next line, I'm going to have, oh, I know, a date. I wonder if I can spell date properly. Date as a date data type. And I'll also have a length as an integer. And finally, I'm going to have a genre as a string as well. So that's the basic way that you declare types. It's, it's almost like declaring variables just stored inside the lines type and end type. You can optionally um, declare your types as public or private, so by default I'll be allowed to use this type in any module in this project. It's, it's already public. If you prefer, you can explicitly state that by saying public type. If you prefer to keep this type limited to this particular module, you can put in the word private instead. So very similar to, to public and private variables, public private enumerations, and so on. I'm quite happy that this is a public type, so I'm going to just take away the uh, the optional keyword there, and that's essentially my type declared. Using your type in code, then, is just as simple as declaring a variable which sets its data type to be equal to the name of the type you've declared. So if I create a new subroutine which I'm going to call test film type, which isn't very inventive, but it'll do for now, I can declare a variable in here which I'm going to call new film, and I'm going to say as film. So your data type should appear in the IntelliSense list. 
to set the values of, of its various elements then. This is just as simple as treating them as independent variables. So if I say new film and dots, I'll get the full list of elements that I've declared. And I can say id equals, and I put in a symbol number, for example. I can use any other method that I could use to set the value of a variable as well. So I could use an input box, for example. So I could say film, uh, sorry, new film dot name equals input box and then ask the user to type in a film name. I could also use values of cells so if I knew that the one of the cells in my worksheet contained the date that I wanted to use I could say new film dot date equals and then say I know range c10 dot value for example. So it, th these really genuinely do behave just like traditional variables you can set their values in any way you see fit. Um, but the beauty, th beautiful thing is that you've got all these properties grouped together in a nice easy to use object. Reading values from a type is just as simple as writing values to it. So if I wanted to, for instance, read the information into cells in the worksheet, or just for the sake of demonstration, I'll just display some information in a message box. The, the principle is the same thing. So if I, I display a message box which shows me the new film dot ID, and I'll join that together with a space, and then also show the new film dot name. And if I execute that subroutine using the F5 key. I can type in a film name, I'll just type in Guardians, I can't be bothered typing in the whole film name, click OK and I'll see those results returned to the message box. But that could just as easily have gone into cells in the worksheet. Um, so it genuinely is just as simple as using normal variables. One quite fun thing to do with our types is to combine them with enumerations. And we've covered enumerations in a previous video in this series, so I won't go into too much detail here. But let's just say, for example, that for the genre, at the moment I've, I've got it stored as a string. So if I wanted to set its value, I'd have to type in the explicit string that I wanted the genre to be. That doesn't give me any, any sort of help in terms of what the valid options might be. Maybe I want to restrict the list to a specific range of values. In that case, what I can do is create an enumeration that contains the individual genres. So I'm going to declare that at the top of my module again, so just below my type. I'm going to declare an enum called genres, and I'm going to say end enum. And then inside that statement, I'm going to write out the various um, types of films I might want to see. So there's action, there's adventure, there's um, animation, and so on and so on and so on. There's sci-fi, etc, etc. I could carry on this thing more and more, but, but that's enough to get the idea. What I can do then is change my genre element to not store a string, but instead to store an item of the genres enumeration. So again, that should appear in the IntelliSense list just as our type did earlier on. Now the cool thing about that is when I go to set my my genre property of my new film item, I can say new film dot genre, and I can make it equal to, and I get a nice little enumerated list. So I don't have to type in the whole word. I can just select from that list. Now, although the enumeration makes it quite easy to set the value of the genre element, it's not quite so easy to read it back. If I try to incorporate that into my message box, so I'll add another space and then another property, so let's say new film dot genre. Sadly, what I won't get back is the word adventure or sci-fi or whatever word I've used here. If I execute the routine, I'll type in uh, Guardians again. I won't because I, won't, I can't spell it. Guardians, there we go. Um, I'll get 99 Guardians 1. And then the reason I get the number 1 is because adventure is um, is the, the the second element so so in in the enumeration all of these these items all the elements in the enumeration are assigned a, a, a number so action is zero adventure is one animation two and so on and so on and so on um, so if I wanted to be able to return the actual descriptive text what I'd have to do is create perhaps a custom function that takes in the the genre used and, and converts that into a string just to show you the basic principle of how that might work I could declare a new function here called uh, genre text perhaps genre text not genre test and in there I would accept an item um, so I would say something like I don't know value as genres and it's going to return a string and what I could then do in my function is I could test um, with a case statement perhaps, so I could say select case value and select and I could say then case action and then I could say genre text equals excuse me, whoops, genre text equals 
the word um, action. So it returns the actual string of text, case, adventure, and so on and so on and so on. So at this point, everything is very straightforward. Once you've got the basic structure of the, of the function, you could just add more and more and more cases to this to return the various strings of text for each case. So to actually use that then to display that on my message box, all I would need to do is pass my new film genre into my genre text function. So I could say, um, rather than just new film genre, I could say genre text. Open some parentheses, close the parentheses at the end, and that would re return the correct word for whatever genre has been set. So I just run that one again to show you that it works. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter what the film name is at this point. Click OK. I'll get the word adventure rather than the number one. So it's a little bit more effort to, to use, um, but I, I quite like enumerations. I, I try to use them um, frequently. Um, it just means that you have to have, if you want to return the actual textual description of, the, of your enumeration, you'll need a function that will do that for you. Another useful feature of a type is that once you've declared it, you can use it to set the data type of another element in another type. So in this example, I've worked up a quick contact type, which has some basic personal details, and then two sets of address information, a home and a work address. It's fairly tedious to have to list out those elements essentially twice. So what we'll do is convert these into another type called address. So to do that, I'm going to declare my other type above the contact one. This is quite important, otherwise I won't be able to reference it properly. I'll show you that in just a moment. So I'm going to create another type called address, and then say end type, and then I'll quickly cheat and copy a set of these address elements into my address type. I'll just take the word work away from the start of each of those lines. So we have a basic address type. What I can then do, wonderfully, is remove all of these individually declared elements in the contact type and replace those with two simple home address as address and work address. I shouldn't use capital letters, shouldn't I, to make things consistent? Work address as address. Using this is just fantastic now. So if I create a new subroutine, which I'm going to call test contact, and I can declare a new variable, I'm going to call mine um, C as a contact, just to make it nice and short and easy. What I can then do is say C dot first name and so on, just in the usual way. When I get onto the address information, though, I can say C dot home address dot, and then I get a sub list. Uh, the intelligence shows me the individual properties or elements of the address of the contact. It's just fantastic. So I can say name or number equals three, which is going to be a string, and so on and so on and so on. So nesting types is wonderful. You can carry on doing this to, to more levels as well if, if you need to. Um, that's just a great way to save time if you're intending to use types multiple times. Just a quick note on what happens if you declare your types in a different order. So at this point my subroutine runs quite happily. I can use F8 to step through and everything works normally. If I declare my type, my address type after my contact type, however, things don't go quite so smoothly. So here, if I attempt to step through my subroutine using the F8 key, I'll get a compile error immediately saying that my contact type is referencing another user-defined type, um, but because that one's declared afterwards, it doesn't work. Um, another, way, another way that you'll see that is another clue, is that when you're actually writing your code, if I say C dot at this point, I don't get any IntelliSense anymore. Um, the compile error stops the IntelliSense list from working properly. So, just make sure that if you're going to do this, you declare your types in the sensible order, the correct order. So declare them in the sequence you're going to use them. It doesn't seem to have any effect if you declare them in different modules. Um, so I could have happily, if I cut my address type altogether from this one and insert a brand new module and declare my address type in here, this one will happily now still work if I use the F8 key to step through. So as long as you, if you declare them in different modules, it's absolutely fine. If you declare them in the same module, make sure that you declare them in the correct order. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.